Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad y'all could come back to hear the word. And not only hear the word, but be those of the word. Glory be to all, yeah. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Hallelujah. Today, we're still back. In the book of Romans, and we're on chapter 7, an example from marriage. Now, before we begin our reading or anything like that, we, I want to know from you guys. Are you saved? Have you laid down your life to receive Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior? Were you baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? Are you reading God's word daily, preferably the King James Version of your Bible, going down on your knees in prayer and crying out to the Father in sincerity and truth? And of course, you don't stop crying out to him until you hear from him. He will teach you the word. Not only he will teach you the word, and he will answer you. He knows when your heart is right, right? He knows your heart. And not only that, he'll teach you the word of God, right? He will answer you so you can have that personal relationship with him. That's what you, with the Father seeking from each and every one of us. It's not about religion, it's about a personal relationship. Okay? Hearing from him and being obedient to his will. And uh, I hope you all live in a daily life of repentance because we live in these fleshly bodies and the flesh is always warring with the spirit. Always warring with the spirit. The flesh is willing. No, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'll say it again. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I always tell you the truth because I love you and Father God loves you more. We're going to say a prayer for children all of, of all ages and we're going to get right into our reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every day. Thank you, Father, for your daily provisions. Thank you for your protection, my Father. Thank you, Father, for giving us parents that love us and train us up by your word. We love them. Thank you, Father, for giving us siblings that we love. And thank you, Father, for teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. And we love you, my Father. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 7, an example from marriage. My friends, you surely understand enough about law to know that laws only have power over people who are alive. For example, the law says that a man's wife must remain his wife as long as he lives. But once her husband is dead, she is free to marry someone else. However, if she goes off with another man while her husband is still alive, she is said to be unfaithful. That is how it is with you, my friends. You are now part of the body of Christ and are dead to the power of the law. You are free to belong to Christ who was raised to life so that we could serve God. When we thought only of ourselves, the law made us have sinful desires. It made every part of our bodies into slaves who are doomed to die. But the law no longer rules over us. We are like dead people and it cannot have any power over us. Now we can serve God in a new way by obeying his spirit and not in the old way by obeying the writing or the written law. The battle with sin. Does this mean that the law is sinful? Certainly not. But if it had, been, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known what sin is really like. For example, I would not have known what it means to, know, to want something that belongs to someone else unless the law had told me not to do that. It was sin that used to use this command as a way of making me have all kinds of desires. But without the law, sin is dead. Before I knew about the law, I was alive. But as soon as I heard that command, sin came to life and I died. The very command that was supposed to bring me life to me instead brought death. Sin used this command to trick me and because of it, I died. Still the law and his commands are holy and correct and good. Am I saying that something good caused my death? Certainly not. It was sin that killed me by using something good. Now we can see how terrible and evil sin really is. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am merely a human, and I have been sold as a slave to sin. In fact, I don't understand why I act the way I do. I don't do what I know is right. I do the things I hate. Although I don't do what, is, what I know is right, I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing these evil things. 
The sin that lives in me is what does them. I know that my selfish desires won't let me do anything that is good. Even when I want to do right, I cannot. Instead of doing what I know is right, I do wrong. And so, if I don't do what I know is right, I am no longer the one doing these evil things. The sin that lives in me is what does them. The law has shown me that something in me keeps me from doing what I know is right. With my whole heart I agree with the law of God, but in every part of me I discover something fighting against my mind, and it makes me a prisoner of sin that controls everything I do. What a miserable person I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is doomed to die? Thank God, Jesus Christ will rescue me. So with my mind I serve the law of God, although my selfish desires make me serve the law of sin. Mm -mm -mm. Like I was saying, the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. God's willing tomorrow. We come back still in the book of Romans, chapter 8. Living by the power of God's spirit. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. Be not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one or some, he died for us all. And if you haven't given your life to Christ Jesus, what are you waiting for? You cannot be saved by any other. There's no other way to salvation, only through Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As Jesus said, the Father and I are one. Glory be to a higher. Yes, I believe that and receive that in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And you all, hallelujah. Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's not something up for debate or discussion. It's something we almost do, so please do it. And if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, please let it go. You must let it go. If you want your Father who art in heaven to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions, you must forgive your fellow man. I don't care who he or she is or what they've done. Hey, please forgive. Um, you not only forgiveness is not only for is is basically for you because if you don't forgive, then your then your sins don't be forgiven. I won't be forgiven either. Not only that, you, your prayers may be hindered. You don't want that. None of us do, right? We want the Lord to hear our prayers, Hallelujah, and answer them. Glory be to a higher. I love you all with the love of the Lord, and Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, from youngest to oldest alike, God bless you. Bye bye.